Last week, we discussed faith from Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Now, faith is being sure of things that you hope for and certain of things that you have not yet seen. I wonder, have you ever wondered why you have to say vows at a wedding? Have you ever been to a wedding and it was totally silent? They didn't say anything. They just walked up, uh, got the rings, put on the rings, and kissed each other and walked off. Yeah. That you'd say, man, I, I didn't get married. I mean, I didn't say that. I was supposed to say, I do. And, you know, what, what it is is that the words it themselves are agreeing and making the covenant real. If, if you don't ever say, I do, you never say yes, well, you walked up there, you had the dress on, you had the suit on, but nothing happened because no word of agreement came. And I have to just mention this one Funny story, you know, when you've been preaching 52 years and done hundreds of weddings, a lot happens. And this one came out of nowhere, but I had a young couple. They were all excited, you know, uh, about getting married. They came forward, and uh, I just remember I told them to turn and take hands like I always do, and, and, and I had preached to them in the message and done everything, and now comes the moment of truth. I mean, this is the moment of vows. And I saw when the guy turned around, he started kind of breathing heavy, like hyperventilating a little bit. And I thought, oh, Jesus, here we go. And this had never happened, but when it came his time, you know, he was first to say, I take you to be my lawful wedded wife. When I made the statement kind of prompting him, I said, I, I do take you to be my lawful wedded wife. That brother was breathing so hard, and the next thing I know, he just straightened up like a cord of wood and just fell straight back to the ground. <laughs> Nobody caught him either, by the way. And he just hit the floor, and of course, the whole room went, <gasps> like you just did. And his dear wife, God bless her, she's looking down, the man is laying on the floor. And so I just didn't know what to do, but in that second, I told everybody, I said, now everybody just keep calm. Our brother just got a little overwhelmed with the size of the commitment that he was making. <laughs> but he's going to be all right. We're going to minister to him here a little bit. So a couple of guys got around him, kind of sat him up, got him some water, got him. And next thing you know, he's back on his feet, ready to go. <laughs> and, you know, he did follow through with it. But, you know, I, just, I was just thinking back about that. Why do we have to say something? Because we're entering into a covenant relationship. In other words... Faith has to be spoken. You, you know, you can think about it. You can have it down in your heart. That guy had it down in his heart, man. He was ready to go. But when it came to the moment, he couldn't say it, and that therefore he couldn't get married until he said something. And it's a declaration. It's a pledge. It's a commitment of faith. It starts in the heart, but it ends up at the altar with a few words. And here's the reason, I, as I thought more about that, Words mean agreement. Words mean covenant. And until they're spoken, nothing has happened. That's why you go to that at sickness and health, poverty, wealth, until death do us part. You're making a covenant. Of course, a lot of people, they go back on those words. They think, I didn't really say it, didn't mean it, didn't have it. But, but faith is spoken as well. When I say words that agree with God's words, I'm actually entering into covenant with him. Well, let me give you our theme verse for today. This is in Hebrews 10 and verse 23. Almost all of the theme verses are coming from Hebrews 10 and 11. Paul said these words, let us hold fast. Everybody say hold fast. The confession, and I put in parentheses up here on the screen, the word confession means a profession, a vow, a legal statement, a open declaration, a testimony, and a public statement. That's, that's different translations for that word confess. Let us make, oh, that confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit in here. Teach us, Lord, how to speak your word in faith until the well that we're drilling actually hits water. And we thank you that you are causing people here today who may be discouraged in their faith to be encouraged in Jesus' name. And everybody said, 
Amen. Now, if they put that verse back up for me, I want you to notice the word confession is the same word profession. It's translated profession. And I looked it up in all the dictionaries, the Old English, the Latin, the French, all that. Where do we get this word confession? A lot of you think, well, that just means that I'm going to tell people what I've done wrong. We got that, you know, we go into the confessional, we say what we've done wrong. But, but actually, the Latin word for confessio or professio comes from a word that says to make a vow. To make a vow. It's a positive thing. It's not a negative thing. And we know we have to confess our sin. But maybe people don't understand that you also have to confess your faith. That it's called a declaration. It's making an agreement with God. It's actually a legal thing. When you're in a court of law, you make a profession. When you go into a lawyer field or doctor or banker, you put your name outside and you are professing that you are a lawyer. You're making a positive statement of who you are. And it has to do also with testimony in a courtroom. So this is when you say confess, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. If Christians don't understand that it's not just, well, I believe in my heart, Brother Larry, I believe in my heart. That's good. In fact, it doesn't do you any good to make a, a confession if you don't believe in your heart. Jesus said you have to believe in your heart and speak with your mouth. But I think many times Christians don't know that it's like weddings. It's like vows. You make a statement and the devil hears it, God hears it, and you hear it. Something is strengthened in your faith when it comes out of your mouth. In the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 26, when they brought their tithe, it says they laid their tithe at the feet of the priest and they made a confession. I have come into the land of promise. And it's about... 15 sentences that they say about themselves. But some of us haven't engaged our speech. Now, you know, we are speaking spirits with a free will. That's what a human being is, is a speaking spirit with a free will. And God has made these promises. We spoke about it last week. He expects us to be unwavering in our verbal agreement with professing these promises. The Lord says, the Lord is my shepherd. Say it out loud. Well, how long has it been since you said that out loud? I shall not want. See, really the Psalms are professions of the promise of God. That's why I love the psalm so much. This morning, Psalm 92, I was reading it. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. So I said, thank you, Lord. I'm planted in the house of the Lord, and I'm flourishing in the courts of our God. Now, see, once the Word of God in your book becomes the Word of God in your mouth, and you start speaking out the promises of God, I'm going to tell you something now. You listen to me. Your whole life is going to transform when it starts coming out of your mouth. See, one verse says you're the head and not the tail. So I don't just read that. I say, thank you, Lord. I profess that I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. So faith, why did we not know that? For many years, we just thought, well, faith is sort of a little feeling. You get Your heart gets a little warm. But that's, that's good. you got to believe in your heart. But if it doesn't come out of your mouth, you ain't married yet. Come on, somebody. So here's three principles of mountain-moving words. Three principles. Number one, I believe you must hear a word. You must hear a word. Now, I'm going to use this scripture to explain my first point to you of hearing the word. And it's Romans 10, 17. You can write these down or you can um, turn to them if you have a Bible. It says, faith comes in other words, the whole beginning of faith, if you're here today, you need a miracle, you need a mountain to move in your life. Faith doesn't come by hearing a gospel song. Those are good. I love that. But it says faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. But I added in parentheses the, 
the word, the specific word of Christ. Because specific word, rhema, is different from general word. Your Bible is the general word of God, but a, the word, that's the word logos. But then when God takes a single verse and drops it in your heart about your problem, that is a rhema word. That is a specific word. I remember my daughter at two years old had a blood disease that looked like leukemia. They were all saying it was leukemia. And I, Melanie was staying at the hospital with her. I was at home, and I woke up on the fourth day of Melissa being in the hospital. And instantly, the word came to me, fear not, O man, greatly beloved. And I looked it up. It was in Daniel chapter 9. Man, I didn't even know that verse was in the Bible. I found it through a concordance. And it went on to, say, to talk about how God was with him. And when I got that rhema word, I jumped up out of that bed and I said, Devil, it's over today. You're finished in my daughter. And I got up to the hospital and Melanie came out. She said, Larry, it's a miracle. She said for three days they've been saying that she has leukemia. But another doctor came in today and said she believes this is just a virus. It's going to pass and Melissa's going to be fine. And that's exactly what God did. Come on, she's 37 this week and she's fine. Hallelujah. But what am I saying? If, if you remember the old telephones, I mean, this is years ago. They had things called telephone booths. Nobody, no, y'all don't know what that is. But you would walk in, you'd put a quarter in, and the quarter would drop down, and you would hear something go, ding. And that meant, oh, now you can make the call. Well, see, it's sort of like if it's up here in your head and you read the verse, that's cool. But when the Spirit of God drops that verse, that particular verse about that particular problem down in your heart, and you may have to pray to get that fast, wait on the Lord, but when that verse, of you, you, you latch hold of a specific word. So that's why I said point number one is to hear the word, because until you hear that word, there's no faith. There's life in that word. Then let me give you number two. If, you're, if you've taken these notes, just three principles. Okay, I got a mountain up there looking me in the face. I got to get a word. I got to get a word. And if I were to ask you, what's your word about this problem? Well, you know what? I don't know. Like that one guy, Judas went out and hanged himself. I said, bro, that ain't a promise in the scripture. But you need a word. And then the second word is, the second principle is, speak the word. Come on, everybody say, speak the word. You engage your vocal ability. You, God made you as the only creature in creation that speaks words. Now, I know birds can kind of, but they don't talk like us. They say porpoises talk. Well, yeah, you know, they make a little, but, but we actually speak. We're the only being that can. And I know that evolution can't explain that. I can. We're in the image of God. He's a speaking spirit, and he made us speaking spirits. He said, let there be light, and light came. And you and I have the ability, come on now, get excited about that, because we can speak the word. And it's that scripture that dropped in your heart. You say it over and over and over. I had a friend who had a really bad cold for weeks. He just couldn't get over it. He was in a trailer. He lived in a trailer. And one day, the devil told him he was going to die and all that. He said, well, let me tell you something, Mr. Devil. Sit over there in that chair and let me just read you some scripture. And he began to read the word out loud. He said in 15 minutes, every symptom of that cold was gone and God healed him because the devil can't take the word. He can't take the word. Now, here's the passage I've been waiting to get to. Okay, we're going to put it up on the screen. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately, and they said, Why could we not cast it out? By the way, they had been trying to cast a demon out of a little boy, and they couldn't. And it bothered them that their prayers seemed to be failing. Now, I'm... I'm in that category. I've had this happen. I've said, Lord, why couldn't I get that person well? Why couldn't I get that person delivered? 
And he makes the statement, he said to them, because of your little faith, or one translation, because your faith is so small. And that, I think he's trying to say, you're not, you're not completing your faith. You're, you're feeling it in your heart, but you're not completing it with your mouth. And he said, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed. Now, you can't get any smaller than that. That's the smallest seed that there is. If you've ever seen one, you barely can see it. It's like a speck. He said, yeah, you, you have little faith, but he said, it, if you even have a speck of faith, a speck, how many of you believe you have at least a speck of faith? Yeah. And see, we're thinking, well, now Jesus, of course, he was the son of God, so he could do all those things he did. He did not do any of them as the son of God. Jesus did them as a person like you and me, who had to be water baptized and all of that. He acted as a human instead of the Son of God. And, and he said, if you will say to this mountain. Now watch with it, and I'm, I'm, I'm walking you through this verse. This is Jesus, the head of the church. If you got faith like a grain of mustard seed, and you do, you will say, you will say, God's not going to say anything. He's done all he's going to do. You will say to this here mountain, that's not in there, but I like the way that sounds. Move from here to there. Can you imagine a man walking outside and, and there's Pike's Peak? And he just looks at that sucker and just says, I, I'm telling you right now, move yourself over there. And it would people would think you're nuts, but Jesus talked to trees and they died. He spoke to storms and they and they disappeared. He spoke to dead people and they came to life. And so he said, if you will speak to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And I love the end of the verse, and nothing will be impossible. Did he say for me? No. He said for you. Nothing will be impossible for you. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what the... The, the financial problem, the marriage problem, the kids that have left or run away, the, the demonic power stealing your peace of mind. You can't sleep. I don't know. I don't know if it's cancer, if it's a disease. I don't know what it is, but I know if it's a mountain, it will respond to the word of God in your mouth. I know it will respond. And I'm, going, I'm building that all on the, the head of the church, making that statement. He said, you will say. Now, there is unlimited power in a believing heart and faith-filled words. Because here's a, the here's a thing to remember. Words are containers. They either contain doubt or they contain faith. They either contain hope. Or they contain fear. They either contain anger or they contain love. You see, you are in charge of what you fill the container of words with. Remember the guys that came back from the promised land? Twelve spies, they go out, they see the promised land. They come back. And 10 of them fill their container with a we be not able. We, we, they said the grapes are big. It's awesome. It's wonderful. But that we found giants. And we are not able to overcome these big giants and these huge walls. And we're just not able. They will kill us. They will like we said we're like grasshoppers compared. See, they're filling the containers of the words with fear, doubt, and unbelief. But two of them, Joshua and Caleb, they stood up and said, wait, 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 hold on. We are well able. 
All they did was change what was going in the containers. We're well able to go up, he said, for God has given us the land. Already said they're like bread in our mouth. If you hear the two groups speaking, you think they're talking about two completely different things. Have you ever heard somebody answer the phone? And the first person that they're answering the phone to, they really don't like them. And they say, hello. <laughs> and then their wife calls them on the phone. You can't believe it. 15 seconds later, they say, hello. <laughs> oh, hello. Same word, but a different spirit in it. I don't want to go to a church that's being filled with dead, unbelieving words. I want to be where the Word of God is being spoken with positivity and with faith and hope and love and believing God for those things. See, in your marriage, the problem with our marriage is we said, I do, but we've been filling every word since then with a bunch of unbelief and hate and, and, and anger. You've got to keep filling your words with the words of God. Hallelujah. I, I've been, like I said, I've been married now. 45 years I've been filling my words because they're containers. So your words are a declaration. Look back at David's life. And by the way, I read the psalm this morning. I read First Chronicles, and David wrote a song, and it's just nothing but confessions, nothing but professions of who God, you're my rock, you're my fortress, you're my deliverer, you're my high tower, you're my strong. All David did all day long, just say who God is in his life. But David got out there on the battlefield and got into a war of words with Goliath. And Goliath was a human, and he filled his words with anger. He said, Are you, am I a dog that you come out against me with a little sword and a stick? He said, I will feed you to the birds. And he got, man, he got going with his words. And let me tell you something, the devil's full of words too. And he speaks words to you to strike terror and fear and a report and a medical test and all. You got this, you this, you that. And those words come out, those words. Well, you got to turn around like David did. And he said, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I will strike your head from you, you big ugly thing. All the earth will know that there is a God in Israel, and I love this one, and the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. That's faith-filled words. That's confessing the word and the promise of God. That's professing. That's making a legal claim. That's agreeing with what God said. And one of my favorite things is when the soldiers told Joshua, hey, it's getting dark. Our enemy's going to get away. He said, we got to. And Joshua turned around in the afternoon sun. And he, it says in Joshua 10, he said, son, stand still in Gibeon. And there's never been a day before or since when the Lord so listened to the voice, to the words of a man. I'm, what am I saying? You say, well, that's Joshua, man. That's David. That's got nothing to do with me. No, you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. You've been saved. You've been washed in the blood. You've been sprinkled with the blood. Your name is written in heaven, and you make a profession every morning like a rooster crows. You get up and say, thank you, Lord. I'm born again today. Thank you, Lord. I'm a new creation in Christ. Thank you, Lord. I'm the head and not the tail. Thank you, Lord. I'm victorious in the Lord. Lord. Come on, somebody give the Lord a shout of victory in here. Yeah, come on, North Campus, get excited. Wow. And I love that story, that last one about Paul. He's preaching at Lystra. And the Bible says that as he was preaching, he saw a man had faith to be made well. And he said in a loud voice, stand up right on your feet. He never touched him. He never anointed him. He never did anything. He just said, stand up on your feet. The man had never walked. And it says, and he sprang up and began walking. The power of a word in your mouth to any mountain can move that mountain. So point number two, first you get a word, or you hear a word. Secondly, you speak the word, and thirdly, you hold fast to the word. Now, my experience has been that the first time I say something to something, it's like that old song, when to my mountain I did speak, 
it just stood there like Pike's Peak. Well, that's right. Because it will stand there. Sometimes you don't see anything like them drilling for that water in Africa. Days and days and days you don't see anything. And the thought comes, man, ain't no water down there. It's, it's, it's not there. And then all of a sudden when you least expect it, that water shot up above the platform. And that's what I'm seeing in this today. Hold fast. Back to our text. Let us hold fast the profession or confession of our hope, notice the next two words, without wavering. Without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. What if you believe in your heart and declare it with your mouth, agree with God, but nothing changes? It don't change the first day, the first week. Well, I looked up this word, hold fast, and it's used of a wrestler who's holding someone down with his foot, pinning them. It means to pin something down that's trying to get up and get away. Hold fast. And that's your confession or profession or coming from your mouth. You're saying, devil, leave my family in the name of Jesus. Devil, leave my body. Leave my finances. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He heals me of all my diseases. Psalm 103. You're speaking it, speaking it, speaking it. And it'll try to wiggle off from you. It'll try to get flipped over and get on top of you and you get something bad that comes along and you think, well, it didn't work and it won't work and I'm giving up on that and it, I didn't think it would work. And now it's gotten away from you. Your, your speech changes, your words change to negative, but he says, hold fast, pin it down. Never come out of agreement with God in your words. And by the way, the more days you keep saying that, your spirit hears it, and it gets encouraged. Every time you say it, in fact, I've even looked in the mirror and said to myself, Larry, you're healed in the name of Jesus. Don't see any difference. Don't see any change. Larry, you're blessed in the name of Jesus. See, I'm speaking my words. I'm agreeing with God, and that is what's called endurance. You know, Job never changed his confession. He said that, that he held fast. It says he held fast to his integrity, and he never blamed God. Not one time. He went through all of those trials, all of the storms, and he never allowed his containers to change and say, well, God, I shouldn't have served you anyway. Look at me. I'm full of balls, lost all my money, lost all my kids. He never did that. And because of that, God gave him twice as much. So here's a verse, finally, from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10 and verse 35. Therefore, when it's therefore, you need to know what it's therefore. therefore. Because of the confession of our mouth, do not throw away your confidence. I'm talking to somebody in here that feels as low as a snake's belly in a wagon rut. You've prayed. You've called the prayer line. You've tried everything, and you are literally at your wit's end. Well, let me tell you something. You are going to get your mouth on that mountain today. And you telling that mountain, you are moving out of my way. Can I have an Amen. And you're not throwing away your confidence. How many of you need a financial miracle? Raise up your hand. That's right. All over this room. I want to lead you in a confession right now. Say this out loud. Say, in the name of Jesus, my God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Come on, clap your hands if you believe it. Oh, yeah. And maybe it's fear, and you need to speak 2 Timothy 1, 6. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. Maybe you need healing that says, by his stripes I was healed. But you get that word. So therefore, do not throw away your confidence, 
which has a great reward for you have need of endurance. So that when you have done the will of God, that you've spoken what God says, you may receive what is promised for, watch what God says, yet a little while, and the coming will come and will not delay, but my righteous one, that's you, shall live by faith, and if he shrinks back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. You cannot draw back away from what you've said. It's like when I got married, I said, I'm with you, Melanie, whether you burn the biscuits or not. I didn't say that in the vow, but that's what I was saying. Sickness and in health, poverty and wealth, anything that happens to us, nothing can separate us until death do us part. And I'm staying in that agreement. And we've had hard times like everybody. We go through rough times. We argue a little bit. She finally figures out I'm right, but then it gets all, all good. So here, here we go. Everybody stand up with me. Stand up. Come on, North Campus. You stand up too. And here we go. First, you're going to get a word. Second, you're going to speak the word. So here's what we're going to do. If you've got financial problems and you're in bad debt, I want you to get your mouth ready, and I want you to say these words. Ready? I want you to say, debt. Be removed and cast into the sea. If you're depressed, I want you to say this. Ready? Depression. Be removed and be gone from my mind. If it's fear, say fear. Leave my mind and be cast into the sea. If your family's splitting up, say division. Be removed and leave my family forever. Now, if you're sick, put your hand over your body wherever that sickness is. Come on now. I'm going to get your mouth engaged to that mountain. And I want you to say it out loud. Say disease, sickness, infirmity. Be removed and cast into the sea. Body, be healed. Be restored. Be free. Be delivered. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's clap our hands and give God praise. That's right. That's right. We engage in our mouth. 